um, we are going now to start, okay? So welcome everybody to this uh, webinar on telemeds in, in neuromuscular disorders, state of the art. Uh, today, uh, this webinar will be delivered by professors uh, Sabrina Sacconi from the Centre uh, Hospitalier Universitaire de Nice uh, and Professor Gabriele Siciliano uh, from the University Hospital of Pisa. Uh, they are both uh, uh, neurologists and uh, they have a very uh, marked interest in genetic disorders and uh, also uh, in neuromuscular disorders, most of them, many of them are genetic, as you know. And uh, since, um, uh, so uh, Professor Saikoni uh, uh, works in NIS and uh, is the head of the Department of Peripheral Nervous System and Muscle and the coordinator uh, or coordinator of a basic research team at IRCA, uh, Institute of Research on Cancer and Aging, and working on the supplying of several databases and biobank on neuro rare neuromuscular disorders. Uh, she's interested in particular in new therapeutic strategies for neuromuscular diseases uh, based on the understanding of genetics, epigenetics, endocrine and immune system de deregulation in the progression of these diseases. Uh, professor Siciliano is full professor of neurology uh, in the Department of Clinical and Experimental Medicine, University of Pisa, is the president of the Italian Association of Myology since 2015. Uh, he's got uh, also uh, very large uh, interests uh, in neuroscience and, neuro and clinical neurology, uh, where he uh, works uh, uh, in in the University and the Hospital of Pisa. And the main interests are uh, around clinical, laboratory, and molecular aspects of neurodegenerative and neurogenetic disorders acquired and genetic diseases of peripheral nerve system and skeletal muscle. Uh, he has many and fruitful collaborations with lots of international centers and uh, he, that reflects on his large uh, publication numbers. And he works uh, also for uh, projects that, that are funded by institutional and charity bodies uh, with responsibility in research uh, evaluation committees for public and private funding. Uh, he, last but not least, has been the coordinator of the nationwide Italian collaborative network uh, established in 2009 under a grant by Teleton, and that has already uh, developed a web-based registry of patients for, with mitochondrial disorders. So I think that uh, reads very well for the kind of um, of webinar that we are going to have today. Thank you to both, and the floor is yours. Um, please. Thank you very much, Antonio. So, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Today, we're going to uh, talk about telemedicine in uh, neuromuscular disease and to try to, to have a state of the art. Uh, of this uh, uh, of these practices that has uh, expanded a lot since uh, the pandemic situation uh, exploded. Uh, the next slide, the outline uh, of this uh, presentation, uh, uh, include uh, a little bit of uh, background, uh, the um, use of telemedicine in, in the context of COVID-19 pandemics. Uh, the new challenges, the implementation of remote assessment, and then uh, some practical example uh, of a project uh, with uh, uh, at the European uh, level. And the conclusion, thank you. Next slide. 
Uh, so first of all, uh, telemedicine, it's uh, something that it's uh, really not new because uh, uh, it's um, more than 10 years that uh, uh, is uh, used in clinical application um, as a way to uh, connect with patients and provide them with specialized clinical care. Uh, by the mean of an electronic platform uh, with the, the aim of improved patient self-management, uh, in particular for patients that have limited access to health services. So um, there are several types of uh, um, telemedicine, include teleconsultation, in which you have uh, a, a patient and a doctor, tele-expertise, in which you have two uh, um, uh, physician to doctors that exchange their expertise. Then you can have uh, uh, medical telemonitoring in which you have uh, uh, a patient that is monitored on the long uh, term. And then you may have uh, teleassistance and uh, medical uh, response. Uh, next slide. Uh, the, way, the reason uh, that, that uh, lead to the development of telemedicine was the fact that the population uh, is in, in increasing uh, uh, as well uh, the need of uh, medical support. Uh, the population is also aging. 60% uh, of the patients with neuromuscular disease have more than 65 uh, years of age. And so, and 30% more than 70. So this uh, aging of the population introduced the fact that these patients have a lot of comorbidity uh, and uh, they have a very rare disease. They can be geographically isolated uh, uh, and uh, there is a, a decrease in supply of human resources uh, and uh, limited clinical intervention due to the fact that the expertise in neuromuscular disease is very long to achieve. Uh, and in these diseases, uh, we see that the, uh, the early is uh, the diagnosis, the, be the better is the care that you can uh, provide to your patient. And this patient needs a constant follow-up. And now we are facing an era in which new therapeutics uh, uh, are coming and uh, which increase the need of having uh, very detailed clinical history and a real uh, time study. And uh, um, also uh, we, we want to improve uh, the global uh, uh, health status of our patient uh, with, uh, for example, by providing them of coaching program and uh, um, to prevent the loss of their autonomy. Next. Uh, as, uh, you, as, we, as we know, uh, the neuromuscular disease are very heterogeneous. It can be genetic or autoimmune and include a large spectrum of diseases uh, in which uh, m most of them uh, uh, display great disability. Uh, they may have also multi-system involvement, including cardiac respiratory impairment, but also uh, multi-organ impairment. Next. Uh, this is uh, just to summarize that uh, uh, there is a real difference in the diagnosis of neuromuscular disease. Uh, if you uh, look at the delay in diagnosis, it's much higher in non-neurological non, uh, specialists compared to uh, people that are specialized in neuromuscular disease. Uh, and this can... Uh, um, and uh, this uh, delay it can be critical uh, when we want to introduce new therapy because we want to be as early as possible introducing this therapy. Uh, we, we need to improve the access uh, uh, to expert center for neuromuscular disease uh, and uh, uh, which is one of the aim of uh, the ERN in our muscular disease. Uh, and as you can see, there is a, a different distribution in, uh, uh, in Europe uh, of healthcare center uh, with some country in which there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, ex center experts in neuromuscular disease and other country in which uh, uh, the access of expert center is limited. Next. Next. 
So um, the telemedicine uh, developed in this context uh, for um, and uh, next. Uh, there are several examples of uh, telemedicine approaches uh, in uh, neuromuscular disease uh, that are uh, that have been developed before the pandemic, uh, and uh, all these examples conclude for an improvement in the quality of life of the patient with a reduced hospitalization rate, and uh, also in improvement in quality of life of uh, the caregiver. Next. Um, there are uh, also some criticism about this uh, type of approach, uh, because for example, for us, uh, when we have to evaluate a patient, uh, a neuromuscular disease patient, we need to, uh, for example, evaluate muscle force, uh, sensitivity, reflexes, and it's very difficult uh, or it, it, and it's impossible to do it uh, remotely. So we have to think our neurological examination differently. Next. Uh, in the context of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, the telemedicine uh, um, spread all over uh, the Europe uh, because we want to avoid our patient to come to the hospital uh, and uh, uh, this patient are at higher risk of, of complication uh, and uh, we want to uh, try to keep them at home, to keep them safe and uh, to keep safe also uh, the caregiver uh, and uh, we want to provide to them uh, the same level of uh, care, um, even if it was uh, quite difficult to organize the care of this patient in terms of uh, paramedical support, like for example, physiotherapy and uh, other support that do not, uh, they are not taking in, in, into account uh, in telemedicine. Next. Uh, so there are different rules that uh, has been uh, used in different country uh, uh, to protect a patient uh, from contamination and uh, to organize uh, this care. Uh, these rules are not homogeneous at all and uh, different country adopt different system um, to limit the contamination in this extremely, extremely fragile patient. Uh, and next. Um, most of the country use uh, telemedicine uh, for, uh, uh, for this, uh, to take care of uh, this patient and to enhance care in uh, several types of uh, diseases, uh, in particular, the one that show um, uh, higher severity like uh, ELS. Next. Uh, so telemedicine was not only developed for uh, clinical uh, care, but also uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of development uh, to maintain uh, research in these diseases, which is an important point because we need to develop new therapy for this patient and also to, uh, uh, for a teaching aspect uh, uh, um, because uh, all our students that learn how to do uh, neuromuscular disease examination need to be uh, Teached, and also uh, the patient cannot come to the hospital sometimes, and we need to find a way to examine patient at home. Next. So, uh, in terms of clinical care, uh, the challenges are uh, how to monitor uh, muscle, uh, uh, how to monitor also uh, respiratory function, gait, fall, speech or swallowing problem, uh, how to improve uh, the care while minimizing patient burden. And so uh, we, in the 
first uh, uh, pandemic uh, development of telemedicine, we don't have any specific tool uh, to assess neuromuscular disease, uh, to improve, uh, to, to do diagnosis uh, at distance. And uh, uh, we have a very few self-administered questionnaire developed in a digital way. And, um, and also the score of quality of life uh, were not developed in digital way. Next. So now uh, this uh, is very clear that this part, the remote assessment, uh, represents something that is very interesting, not only because uh, of the situation, the actual situation, but also in the future to increase uh, the number of, um, of possible uh, uh, visits. Uh, uh, during clinical uh, research uh, trial uh, and to monitor uh, closely our patient and to have uh, data in, uh, in, in real life. Uh, so um, there is a lot of measures that you can do uh, more to understand the evolution of the disease, uh, like for example, the one that is uh, illustrated in this uh, uh, paper uh, that uh, has been uh, developed uh, from uh, people from Hans Lukul Muller from Newcastle University that measure habitual physical activity in neuromuscular disorder. And it was very interesting to see that how was done uh, digitally. Next. For the training and teaching is very difficult because uh, um, we develop uh, uh, this uh, system um, uh, the, and the platform are still in development uh, to do the teaching or the congresses. Uh, and uh, uh, the problem is uh, the fact that uh, uh, this tool in the future, if the pandemic uh, uh, go, uh, go away, uh, can be also uh, used to uh, enlarge the population of students that we have access when we have a specific uh, um, expertise. Uh, and also to reduce the number of uh, transport by using uh, telemedicine platform. Uh, next. Uh, look, the problem uh, that we have to deal uh, if we want to organize better telemedicine is how to manage the data that come out from telemedicine and uh, um, also how to manage uh, the uh, patient journey through telemedicine, uh, the integration of patient appointment into the hospital schedule, uh, the management of electronic data transfer and the electronic medical file, uh, and also uh, the electronic patient consent, uh, uh, while um, um, uh, and the, the protection of health personal data uh, it's very important uh, for the patient. Uh, it's also a, a challenge to achieve uh, the fact that not all the patients are instructed to um, uh, use the tools that are necessary to connect in telemedicine. And, um, and not all the patients live in an area in which the internet connection uh, allow to um, to perform uh, the telemedicine. So we have to deal with all this problem uh, while developing this type of, of approach. Thanks. Uh, the remote assessment is something that is uh, becoming the more, more and more important uh, in the context uh, of telemedicine to, to uh, to deal with all these challenges. And uh, uh, Gabriele will tell us uh, something about uh, all the project that has been developed uh, in uh, Pisa University uh, in terms of uh, remote assessment. Thank you, Sabrina. <clears throat> can, you, can you hear me? Perfect. Yes. OK, uh, next slide, please, just to remind some concepts that uh, Sabrina has uh, underlined very well. In other terms, uh, uh, we are dealing with a general issue that is coming more and more relevant uh, 
uh, <clears throat> not also in rare diseases, but generally in uh, all the world of the disability, in which we have to think uh, uh, with the different categories, and uh, I can see different uh, 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 dimensions <clears throat> by which to afford the problems of the uh, related to the disability. It, this is, uh, you can see here, a very nice analysis conducted some years ago on some needs and uh, uh, relevant issues in the dealing with the, the uh, disability related to a neuromuscular disorders. And uh, we can see here a number of items that are not only just clinical, just medical, just neurological or other categories of professional medical activities, but uh, especially uh, related also to some everyday life <coughs> items that are important to consider and to uh, to uh, try to solve in the daily life of the patient. Next slide, please. And uh, related to that, <coughs> uh, coming from the same document, we can see here how some dimensions are directed with uh, uh, what uh, the uh, progress in terms of uh, utilizing uh, also some non-conventional uh, types of analysis of problems. And uh, we can speak here about, uh, for instance, uh, uh, bioinformatics or bioengineering. And uh, in this sense, we have to <coughs> start to consider also some more biotechnological considerations in terms of in particular of telemedicine and uh, uh, related to that, uh, devices for mobility assistance. Next slide, please. And uh, we can uh, see here how there are a lot of uh, uh, items and the systems that have been developed in the last years, more or less based on advancement of biotechnology, which at the same time can record, uh, detect a number of signals and they can uh, transmit them to a center recording uh, area. But on the other end, we have also, next slide please, systems that are able to control, to modulate uh, <clears throat> a number of different uh, uh, activities made by, by the patient and in particular the motor profile, one of the aspects that uh, we absolutely uh, need to evaluate in a patient with a neuromuscular disorder. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Here, uh, very um, quickly, two uh, projects that we are developing in, uh, at PISA in collaboration with other uh, group, uh, groups uh, of uh, uh, scientists which are interested on that. One of these is uh, called DESIRE, which is uh, a, a system by which we want to decode and uh, uh, in <clears throat> different, uh, with different strategy to reconstruct uh, a language uh, production from a patient who are who is affected by a disartric uh, condition. So <clears throat> with this system, and we, uh, by using an already known automatic system recognition, we can start, uh, <clears throat> see at the bottom of the left corner of this slide, we can start for the crude raw uh, <clears throat> physical signal and uh, we can extract a number of features by which we can design an acoustic model and then reconstruct uh, an artificial language, but uh, <clears throat> a language that can be useful for the, for the patient to improve uh, his possibility to interact with uh, other similars and also to 
enrich this uh, uh, function by emotional uh, items. Next slide, please. Here, the, <coughs> very, the, the system how it has been uh, constructed is uh, a collaboration from uh, different uh, uh, research units in Italy. And uh, it is developed both uh, with a smart home environment assistance and also with a clinical management of the patient condition. Next slide. Here, the <coughs> raw data we can use to characterize the patient with a number of items related to the clinical condition, to the uh, clinical outcome measures, as well as to treatment intervention. Next slide, please. And uh, here we have uh, some uh, examples of uh, patients we have recorded with a number of recordings and uh, uh, the time we have uh, used on the right corner of this slide to uh, decode, decode the signal uh, to uh, build up a product that can be used, utilized in everyday life of the patient. Next slide, please. So this is an ongoing project by which we want to improve this technique to use in a number of neuromuscular uh, patients uh, with uh, speech disorders and also to create a normal Italian, but also to be utilized for collaboration in Europe. Next slide, please. This is the other project we have <coughs> worked on in the last years. The, we defined, we called the AIG kit, is a, 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 an app for a smartphone by which we wanted to uh, <coughs> record a number of uh, clinical and instrumental variables to be detected in patients affected by POMPE disease. And in that case, uh, the uh, patient association the Association Italiana Glicogenosi has uh, collaborated on that. Next slide, please. Very <clears throat> basically, the characteristics of this, uh, this uh, instrument <clears throat> and by which we developed it with the, a collaboration <coughs> among psychologists, uh, psychologists uh, and uh, bioengineering. Next slide, please. These are the areas in which the instrument can work on. These include the clinical aspects, uh, uh, more detailed motor performances. We have also a, sections, a section by which we can uh, interact with the patients, uh, exchanging some news on, the, uh, on this condition and uh, uh, also a section in which the patient can, with a more uh, emotional uh, component of his evaluation, can report his condition. Next slide, please. Here <coughs> we have some examples on how the patient can feel the different fields on this very smart system to interact uh, by telemedicine with the medical doctor, the neurologist. Next slide, please. And uh, here again, in, uh, at the bottom of the slide, some, <coughs> uh, apologize, is reported in Italian language, some uh, um, conditions and some uh, experience the patient can report and by which we collected uh, the cases followed in different Italian centers involved in the follow-up of Pompey's patients over the, our country. Next slide. And this is a very clear graphical uh, modality to show you how we can follow over the time modifications of some parameters in the progression of the response to treatments of the disease. Next slide. Uh, one problem we have is uh, we have experienced for these uh, initiatives 
has been related to some ethical and uh, I can say uh, procedural uh, steps by which we had to afford the ethical committee approval to activate this uh, a platform, a web platform in which to put all this data collected from the patients and uh, overall we uh, had some problems in our centers to uh, overcome, overcome, next slide please, some issues related to the privacy impact evaluation document. I think this, is, uh, this has to be a very uh, important point to be addressed in the next future to be able to improve, uh, to <clears throat> uh, let, let us to uh, progress with these initiatives in other terms. Uh, to uh, make more easy to exchange this uh, uh, collection of data and to enable to uh, build up a, a really functional and a really uh, shared uh, instrumentation that can be used by different centers uh, between our ERN uh, ERN HCPs. Next slide, please. And this just <laughs> to, to, to show you which are the, <clears throat> the, the, the problematic issues related to the PIA. You can see a lot of items that we have to take into account and to consider before to go ahead in <clears throat> this enterprise from just a, a uh, the considerations or the rules that uh, we need to uh, consider for that. Next slide. And with this, I uh, go back to Sabrina, please. Thank you, Gabriele. So we go back a little bit on telemedicine. Next slide. Uh, so this is uh, an overview in, of the use of uh, mobile health application. Uh, and uh, in uh, Europe, uh, as you can see, there is a lot of application that has been developed in United Kingdom and then uh, in Germany. And then you see a little bit uh, uh, the other number of uh, application. And, uh, um, the, and this is a study that it's uh, worldwide that is, has been conducted several years ago. And uh, as you can see, the, the lead domain in which the application has been developed is a, a mental health uh, application. So in the future, uh, the market study present a strong development of, uh, of application, mobile health application in the domain of uh, neuromuscular disease. Uh, because uh, um, the, uh, there is an uh, upcoming therapy and uh, there is a need to follow up the patient uh, in a more um, close uh, and uh, uh, patient empowering uh, way. Next slide. Uh, so, uh, for uh, um, to assess uh, the interest uh, uh, of uh, telemedicine uh, or and uh, also of uh, medical devices connected to telemedicine as uh, application or other medical devices, there is uh, 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 set up uh, uh, by the European Commission of recommendation. Um, uh, it's uh, a multidimensional uh, uh, evaluation uh, framework uh, that uh, is proposed if you want to evaluate uh, your practice uh, of uh, telemedicine. And this model is called MAST. And uh, there is uh, in this model a multidisciplinary perspective uh, in order to see if uh, the way that you are applying telemedicine to the care of your patient is relevant and if uh, the patient that you are treating are satisfied and you, you are also satisfied on your own job. Next. Um, another, uh, so 
it's very important to evaluate uh, your practice and uh, uh, to try to understand the frame in which you want to develop telemedicine uh, beside the specific context of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and what are the patients that you can follow by telemedicine and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in which patient uh, the use of telemedicine can represent a lack of chance in terms of care or uh, treatment. Uh, another problem that you have to cover is the fact that uh, the coverage by health insurance of telemedicine can be insufficient. Uh, this is the example uh, of France in which uh, you, you will uh, receive for a telemedicine act between uh, 23 to 58 euro, uh, depend on the speciality of the doctor. So uh, we demonstrate in the study that I'm going to present you that this uh, uh, amount of money is really insufficient uh, because the use of telemedicine, uh, especially when you, when you have to deal with the, the multidisciplinary approach that we are used to, to give to our patient, uh, takes a, a, a larger effort. And we need uh, to, to have a, a, a stronger organization, especially if we want to, to take care of patients that live in a very, um, uh, in island or in very, um, uh, in, count, in the countryside uh, in which there is no connection and the people are not used to, uh, to this type of tools. Uh, and uh, at least uh, in France, uh, we are now uh, trying to work in projects in which we use the mass um, uh, evaluation in order to demonstrate that uh, we need to develop uh, some specific packages to take care of patients with chronic neuromuscular disease. Next. So we are now involved in two projects. One is a, a, a national project in which we connect the center of uh, um, Nice and of Marseille uh, to uh, two center uh, in the uh, in Course Island. Um, this project uh, uh, has been uh, uh, done with the sustain of the um, um, Regional Association or uh, Health Association of course, and the IFM Teleton. Uh, and the, the second project that I want to briefly talk about, it's a, a European project called Alcotra Prosol. Uh, Prosol is for proximity and solidarity, uh, in which we develop telemedicine uh, in um, cross-border territory be, um, between France and Italy. And this project was funded by the Europe and sustained by the uh, locally for uh, the part that concerned France by the Metropole Nice Next. So basically it's the same, uh, the same uh, object is try to understand if it's uh, interesting and uh, of you, the use of telemedicine in these territories. What are the challenges that you have to deal with and uh, the time that you have uh, to use to develop this type of approach and also how to ensure uh, a long-term uh, existence of uh, uh, telemedicine in hospital in which you don't have any people that is uh, um, trained uh, to take care of this type of patient and uh, you have very limited resource in terms of human being. Next. There are several, uh, several uh, aspect of uh, these two projects that uh, one is the telemedicine so it's the clinical part uh, uh, in uh, the european project prosol we also not only we deal with the neuromuscular disease but also we have developed telemedicine for the neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental disease so it's a large population from children to uh, aged person uh, and uh, the idea is to, 
to evaluate this project in, in order to, to, to develop uh, adapted packages. Uh, and uh, these packages uh, will cover uh, the time that you spend in the organization, the cost of the training for, uh, and uh, for, uh, for the people in the hospital of proximity, but also for the people that uh, can go to, uh, at home uh, and help us uh, with the clinical examination. Uh, and also uh, the, the, how to develop the clinical research uh, at, at home and, and uh, education and training using uh, telemedicine. So um, we are uh, using a specific solution that allows us to reach this patient. And uh, we have uh, next, the result, the preliminary result of the studies uh, show a very good uh, feedback from physician and patient after using telemedicine. Uh, and uh, we, we have seen that it demand a huge organization because uh, especially when the patient have to go to the proximity hospital because uh, uh, the, of the limited resources, human resources in this hospital and the fact that these resources are not trained uh, specifically. So they are a little bit scared to deal with this patient, especially if they are severe. So we need to improve this part. And, uh, uh, and also there is, uh, for the patient at home, there is uh, a need to uh, educate this patient of the use of new technology. We have, a, the, the good news was that we have a very few technical issues, even if the internet connection was a little bit bad, uh, we could uh, uh, perform all, uh, all of the teleconsultation, even the one that involved multidisciplinary team that lasts uh, uh, several hours. And, um, and um, we could train um, and teach uh, the professional uh, using e-learning at distance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and also we are starting now uh, some clinical research study involving uh, medical devices. And it seems that this system is also adapted to this uh, type of uh, approach. Uh, next. So in this slide, uh, I, I try to put together all the pros and cons of using uh, telemedicine uh, as, uh, with a specific uh, eyes on uh, neuromuscular disease. Uh, uh, I think the, the, the most important aspect we have to develop beside the use of medical devices that can be um, um, represent a cost and also a problem because it can be a technical problem to use uh, this uh, type of devices is the fact that we have to try to uh, approach the patient differently and to try to develop a different type of physical examination of neuromuscular disease patient. Um, there are also another important point is the fact that uh, patients lack of uh, paramedical support like physiotherapy, uh, psychological support, and nutritional support. And uh, uh, these, all these acts are not uh, refunded by uh, the health insurance systems. And we need to try to understand how we can provide uh, the patient, this patient with uh, this type of support. Uh, the other problem, the last problem is uh, the emergency situation. So it's very difficult to uh, schedule uh, telemedicine uh, and also in particular it's very difficult when you have to uh, answer uh, an emergency uh, of this patient. So uh, we have to try to understand um, how to deal with this point because uh, for the sake of our patient, uh, maybe to extend uh, the use of uh, uh, telemedicine to other specialists that can be more reactive than uh, um, uh, an expert in neuromuscular disease. Next. Um, so the idea is uh, to try to understand uh, through a survey uh, between uh, all of you, um, what are the advantages and the limitation of telemedicine based on the approach that you had during the pandemic. Uh, we're gonna send you a survey 
that uh, we are developing uh, among the um, uh, muscle panel uh, and uh, the educational uh, panel uh, of uh, ERN uh, in order to try to understand the European landscape and uh, to try to uh, point out what are uh, really the pros and cons of this approach that you experience uh, in your, uh, your real life. Uh, we know that uh, we can increase the quality of life of uh, our neuromuscular disease patient. Uh, we cannot uh, completely replace classical consultation, but we can improve uh, our way to uh, uh, provide care and follow up of our patient. So uh, we need your input to uh, try to understand better. And we need uh, to set up probably a common organization in order to uh, improve uh, uh, the care of uh, the patient at distance. Next. So I would like to thank all this um, entity um, uh, for that have supported all the work that are presented in, in this presentation. And uh, I would like also uh, to thank uh, Antonio for the organization. And uh, I leave uh, Gabriele the first word. The last word. The last word. <laughs> the last word, the next slide, please, Antonio. Uh, just to remind you that uh, for this, I am proud, happy to share, first of all, with Sabrina, who organized the first Congress on the topic in uh, 2019, but also you can see from the steering committee of this uh, small uh, uh, scientific group that uh, we are going to uh, build up and hope to realize in the next future. And uh, uh, just link to that, uh, an advertisement for the next event we uh, called ENMD. E is like uh, electronic, but just this, a form <laughs> of uh, uh, enrichment of our more uh, clinical activity, in, uh, by which we want to uh, follow and uh, propose all the uh, possible uh, future development of the e health and the innovation related to uh, these diseases with the uh, final aim to overcome, overcome barriers. And uh, if we think to the basic uh, phrase of our ERN, building bridges and breaking barriers, we deeply think that uh, uh, telemedicine can be uh, uh, one of the main uh, pillars for this, uh, I can say, quite new uh, dimension of our competence. So we hope to organize in vivo, in presence, this next event. You can remember that uh, last year we had to uh, organize that uh, virtually. But uh, next slide, Antonio, the last one. Yes. Uh, uh, we hope to have you in this uh, maybe at the end of the year, but uh, we will give you details uh, on that. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation, and I think that uh, very interesting and rich. Uh, we have uh, several questions already, and uh, the first one comes from a very known person. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Conrad Angelini. Dr. Uh, Angelini, if you want, you can unmute yourself and put the question directly. Otherwise, I will read it. Okay, Antonio, can you Hi. hear me? Yes, you can. Yes, we can. Okay, I congratulate uh, Sabrina Sacconi and Gabriele Siciliano for uh, this entertaining and very interesting seminar. And uh, I was particularly puzzled by this project that is developing in Pisa by the name of Desire. And uh, it's directed, I understand, 
toward the speech. I, I would like to have uh, and Gabriele Siciliano comment both on speech and on prescribing uh, exercise in ALS patient. Do you think this could be done by telemedicine? Has this been done? I know there is telemedicine in Turin for following the status of the patient. But what about for prescribing exercise or taking care of these arthritic patients? Thank you, Corrado, for this very stimulating question. Uh, on the other side, we could expect that uh, if we consider that you are one of the members of the scientific committee of the ENMD. And uh, uh, we know, we all know that this is uh, one of the, the masterpiece problems in neuromuscular disorders to uh, try to understand at which extent it could be useful or alternatively could be dangerous for uh, uh, patients in the different per motor performances, including the speech. Uh, this is a quite new field and we have to think about on what we can learn by these, uh, uh, these experiences and uh, particularly from the project we are building up. But I think that uh, if we consider that we can use uh, uh, these uh, new generations of biosensors and also we can use algorithms to find the best uh, uh, profile no, of uh, an exercise performance that can be evaluated and can be uh, monitored with respect to, for instance, the, uh, the, the indexes of fatigue or the indexes of uh, exhaustion and uh, uh, all those, uh, those uh, uh, biomarkers, um, we can say better, those bioengineering markers, I think that we are, can have uh, a tool by which we can answer to uh, all these questions. So uh, what I, I want to say is that we have to change a little bit our, our way to think about uh, these more clinical problems and maybe we can get uh, ad uh, advantage for using from using uh, these uh, uh, new techniques uh, for answering to those more classical questions okay so there's a question from neringa mustekait uh, you can unmute yourself and put the question uh, live please so Otherwise, I'll read it. Okay, in that case, uh, the question is if you know or, or if you can share any experience of telemedicine in the pathology field. Uh, in pathology, anatomopathology field, uh, it, it will be more uh, a tele-expertise uh, than a telemedicine in which there are two people that are discussing within each other. I think that uh, uh, DRN uh, and MD provide a, a way to discuss uh, around uh, uh, a pathology um, um, images. And uh, uh, I think that uh, you may have some information. Antonio will provide you with some information about this system in which you can discuss uh, clinical cases and also histological images with experts in this field. Yeah, I can confirm that the so-called CPMS, the, so the Clinical Patient Management System, uh, has a, a core group of experts in neuropathology and they can be contacted to discuss cases. And they are starting to organize uh, regular case discussions on the side of the demands for tele-expertise. 
uh, to basically incentivize uh, the exchange of uh, expertise and information between those experts. So the next question is from an another known name, uh, Dr. Peter van den Berg. You can unmute yourself, please, and put your question. Hello. Um, <clears throat> it was a, a, an excellent presentation. And I don't know whether you hear me. Yes, we do. OK. So congratulations. It was very interesting, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I think uh, your experience with uh, telemedicine is, is just great. And I think it may serve as a very good example for what we need in the European Reference Network. And of course, in our case, it's EuroNMD. Because uh, it, the Europe should, should indeed uh, know how this works in, in, uh, in, in, in several countries already. And uh, they, they could learn from this on how to improve things. And uh, an important aspect, I think, is indeed um, financial compensation for uh, the, the work we would do with the CPMS. So that's the comment I wanted to make. Okay. Yeah, quite agree. Uh, I think that uh, currently the Commission is also already aware that the different ERNs want the CPMS on one side to be integrated into the national healthcare uh, platforms and that basically the work that the experts uh, develop inside the CPMS and around all the support that it uh, implicates uh, can should be and needs to be recognized as working time for the experts of course. <laughs> It's almost laughable to say it, but uh, unfortunately it was set up without those type of um, preoccupation already cleared. So we are now asking for basically the different healthcare systems to recognize that when an expert is working on CPMS, he's working. It's not, it's not video games, basically. <laughs> may, may, may I add? Uh... Yes, you may. <laughs> no, I think that uh, obviously we uh, we now face a very new innovative uh, area in which we cannot be uh, at the moment uh, quite precise in, uh, in the different aspects and so on. But I think that when we talk about uh, telemedicine, we have to. Uh, uh, maintain a basic uh, uh, fundamental element that uh, telemedicine is, from my point of view, is or should be mainly based on a, uh, communication between patient, the patient, and the clinician. And this is uh, the basic axis along which we have to, we, or we can to, we can uh, build up a number of uh, uh, further developments of this area. So, no, we, listen, we talked before about uh, uh, how telemedicine can be used for pathology. Yes, it is. It can be useful, but this is a discussion between experts. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to consider the connection between the patient and the, the clinician that, from uh, my point of view, remains the basic uh, aspects of telemedicine. And related to that, I think it should be useful also to uh, know the, uh, the, the point of view of the patients and what do, do they expect from that, what are their thinking and then uh, their uh, uh, way to afford this area. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions. Uh, I would just like to thank uh, Professor Sacconi and Professor Siciliano for this fantastic presentation and for the discussions that it may trigger. So one thing that is good is that beside all the people that were today 
in live uh, watching it, uh, we will make it available through the Euro NMD website and it will be also available on the Euro NMD YouTube channel in a few days. Okay, so um, that can be re revisited and you can afterwards indicate that as well to uh, junior people or students that may have the interest of, of getting acquainted with the team. And so very, thank you very much to both and uh, hope to see you, see you all very soon. Bye now. Thank you very much, Anton. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.